Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 255, Paranorman Activity. The island of Sodor was experiencing one of the worst storms it had ever seen. The trains were stopped, the engines were stranded, and Sir Topham Hatt was more nervous than ever. I don't think we'll be going anywhere anytime soon, said Edward. I guess we better prepare to spend the night at Knapford. Just then, through the torrential wind and rain, Thomas spotted something. Cinders and ashes! Is that who I think it is? It was Toby and Norman. The engines quickly made room under the canopy. Toby, exclaimed Sir Topham Hatt, we've been so worried about you. But what are you doing with Norman? asked Thomas. Did he find you? Well, yes, I suppose you could say that. It's a long story. Well, it's not like we have anywhere to go. Tell us what happened. Toby smiled. All right, then. After my accident with Dustin, Sir Topham Hatt recommended I go spend some time in my shed. But I got to thinking about everything that's been going on lately, and I realized there was something I could do. I needed to go see an old acquaintance on the mainland, but as you can tell, I wasn't in any shape to get there. I decided to leave in the middle of the night so that no one would raise a fuss. Well, that certainly didn't work, chuckled Thomas. We've been so worried about you. We thought something terrible had happened. Stanley said he saw you being dragged away to the mainland by a diesel against your will. Well, that's only partially true, chuckled Norman. The engines gasped. So Stanley was right. He did see a diesel taking you away. But it was you, Norman? All this time, I thought it was a mainland diesel that came and stole you. Yeah, me too. Me three, added Sir Topham Hatt. A steam engine from the steelworks alerted me to your condition, Toby. He was very scared for you. It's all right. I was fine the entire time. Norman saw me struggling along the line and I told him about the situation. He volunteered to pull me to the other railway so that I would get there quicker. And it's a good thing he did. I was in no shape to make the journey alone. So Norman's help was greatly appreciated. Well, keep going, said Gordon. Did you find what you were looking for? Oh, right. Well, yes, I did, but it gets a little more complicated after that. Uh, sir, may I speak to you? Alone, please? The engines looked around. What? You don't want to tell us, Toby? Yes, Toby, it's quite all right to tell the other engines. There are no more secrets to keep. Speaking of which, I believe we found the treasure and we might have a shot at capturing Sailor John. Oh, that's great news, sir. Especially regarding the treasure. I know how important that is to you and the railway. Precisely, Toby. Now I want you to tell everyone about who you went to meet. It was obviously so important that you couldn't wait to tell any of us where you went. But Toby was unsure. This acquaintance, sir, I'm not really sure I should be telling everyone about all this. But the engines were not going to be denied. Tell us the story, Toby. We've got nothing else to do until the storm passes. Toby looked around nervously. It's all right, said Norman. Go ahead and tell everyone. Okay, then. Well, the engine that I went to see... Sir Topham Hat! Sir Topham Hat! cried the station master. Oh, bother! What is it? Can it wait until the end of Toby's story? Great Waterton just sent us a message and said Elizabeth and one of those Crosby Station cargo trucks 
were spotted up in the hills near their station. They want to make sure Elizabeth isn't in any trouble. No, it's fine. I loaned her out to the Admiral. But dear me, Great Waterton? That's quite the distance. They're up in the hills by the Scarloe Railway. I have a feeling I should go make sure everything's all right. That wouldn't be a bad idea, sir. Although the weather is still terrible, I would be willing to take you there to see if you could help. That would be wonderful. Toby, I'm afraid your story will have to wait until I return. Let's go, Thomas. We haven't got a moment to lose. And Sir Topham Hack climbed aboard and Thomas rushed away. The wind and rain were still a terrible distraction, but he chugged all the way to the Scarloe Railway. Here's the station, sir. I can't go any further. If you see them, you might have to finish the rest of the journey on foot. Just then, Rusty pulled in. What are you two doing in this weather? It's terrible out here. We could ask the same thing about you, Rusty. Don't you ever take a break? Of course not. This rain is the perfect catalyst to take out one of our bridges. And I have to be first on the scene if something happens. Say, you haven't seen Elizabeth around, have you? We were hoping to uh, help her with something. Actually, I just saw her chasing after a Crosby Station cargo truck near the Hilltop Station. I think they were on their way to the logging area high up in the mountains. Take me there at once, cried Sir Topham Hatt. I'll take you as close as I can, but the track doesn't go too far. It's roadway only. Good luck, sir, shouted Thomas. I'm going back to Knapford where it's safe. I'll see you soon. Sir Topham Hatt immediately hopped aboard Rusty and they set off. Look up there, sir. I think I see Elizabeth through the fog. And it looks like there are two people up there. What are they doing out in this weather? I bet that's Sailor John and the Admiral. And Sir Topham Hatt was right. Sailor John's old cargo truck had finally given out, and he was stranded at the top of the mountain. Give it up, Sailor John. It's over, and you know it. The treasure's already been found. Because I found it first. I did all of the hard work, and you came and stole it away from me. Just like everything else we've ever shared. The Admiral walked slowly forward. John, we must stop this fighting. Look at all of the chaos and calamity that has been caused because of this feud. You started it. We were such great pals, and pirates, like brothers even. You'll never be an admiral, no matter how hard you try to leave the past behind you. It was a mistake to become a pirate like you. But fortunately, I realized my error and left as soon as I could. Watch the saws on the ground, sir, said Elizabeth. Those blades are very sharp. You were my first mate. I trusted you. I'll never forget the day you got the crew together and mutinied me, all alone out there in the middle of the ocean. You were out of control, John. Being a lifelong bandit is no way to make an honest living. The crew and I couldn't take it anymore. We didn't leave you completely helpless. No, you didn't, actually. You gave me that talking boat that could never learn to shut his trap. But what you didn't realize is that you gave me the start of me brand new life. The one I live today. We were on our way to Sodar when you threw me overboard. Do you remember? The amount of treasure and plunder we discover here and share together would have been beyond anything we could have imagined. And yet... You threw our friendship away, just like that. You won't be taking me back to Sir Topham Hat, so stay right there. What are they saying? asked Rusty. I can't hear anything over the wind. 
Me neither, but they better be careful. That's an active logging company up there. Come on down, John. Let's go somewhere a little less precarious and talk this through. Never! And Sailor John lunged at the Admiral. The two struggled mightily at the top of the mountain. The wind! Watch the wind! shouted Elizabeth. But it was too late. Suddenly, the two lost their footing, and they both plunged over the side. Oh, no! cried Sir Topham Hatt. They've fallen into the waterfall. But with the increasing wind and rain, it was impossible to tell where they had ended up. Sir Topham Hatt searched everywhere by the track, but he couldn't find anything. Stay here, Rusty. I need to go up there and rescue Elizabeth. Be careful, sir. Watch your footing. Sir Topham Hatt took the long hike around and eventually made it to the top of the falls. Elizabeth, my dear, I'm so glad you're okay. Did you see where they went? she asked. I saw them both slip, but I have no idea what happened after that. I didn't see anything at the bottom. Come on, let's look again. Sir Topham Hatt drove slowly down the hill, but when he returned to Rusty, there was no news. I don't understand, sir. They fell from the top and we saw them splash into the water. Where did they go? Well, this waterfall is very big and strong. We'll check back when the storm ends. But right now, we need to find some shelter immediately before the wind knocks us off balance like it did to them. Although the weather was ferocious, Elizabeth managed to slowly make her way back to Natford Station. She was exhausted when she pulled in. Look, it's Sir Topham Hat! Sir, sir, did the Admiral finally capture Sailor John? No, I don't believe he did, and Sir Topham Hatt recalled the story to the engines. So they're both... missing? Yes, precisely. Until the weather clears up and we can get a better look at the terrain, I don't want to make any assumptions. Dear me, I am very tired. Perhaps we should all finally get some well-deserved rest, yes? and the engines agreed. When they woke the next morning, the storm was gone, but the island was a mess. Trees were toppled, signals were down, debris was everywhere, but most importantly, everyone was all right. Well, we've cleaned up from storms before, and we'll do it again. It will be a slow process, like usual but I'm just glad all of my engines are all right. Sir, asked Thomas, what about the treasure? Oh, yes, we must reclaim the treasure at once. Later that day, Rocky was once again placed on the pier, and he began to dive for the sunken treasure. Try as he might, though, the search turned up empty. I've looked all over the siding, sir, and we've checked by my shed as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's anything unusual on the bottom of the ocean floor in this area. It's all just rocks and coral. If there were a treasure here, we would have found it by now. Sir Topham Hatt was very disappointed. Yes, I suppose the search and rescue team never fails. I'm guessing the weather messed with the waves and blew it off course. Well, thank you for your work. I think it's time I went home and saw my beautiful lady hat. After everything that's gone on these past few months, I think we all need a few days of peace and quiet. Captain felt defeated as well. It's never fun to come up empty when you're searching for something like that. I only hope Sir Topham Hatt understands that we tried our best and did everything we possibly... Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's the treasure just sitting in this cargo car here. Sir Topham Hatt, look, 
I think it's the treasure you were searching for. Sir Topham Hatt was astounded. Well, I'll be. Where did this come from? We just had Rocky on the line not a few minutes ago, and now... Captain chuckled. I think it's best not to question how it got here, and just be happy it finally showed up. Yes, I'll agree to that. Well, it looks like the railway's going to be okay after all. I'll finally have enough money to repair my engines, and everything can get back to normal. In the following days, there was no sign of the Admiral or Sailor John, and the engines gradually went back to work. Sir Topham Hatt still couldn't believe that the treasure had been found. We owe this discovery to the Admiral, who worked tirelessly for many months, exploring every lead he got and leaving no clue unresolved. Although he is not here in person to share in our good fortune, we will always remember what he did for this railway. The treasure will be going on display at the Sodor Museum, and, very thankfully, I will start getting all of you your necessary repairs. Thank you so much for being here, everyone, and may we all have a very calm and prosperous upcoming holiday season.